the Orioles' chances of winning a World Series gone down the tubes because until he gave up the four runs against the Astros in the one game, we were talking about Felix Batista possibly being a Cy Young candidate. And now most likely won't pitch the rest of this year. Yeah, it's tough watching that because it, it's a truly unfortunate situation for Felix Bautista, who has been so good, so dominant in the back end for the Baltimore Orioles. And you guys know, I've talked about it all year. I've been team Baltimore Orioles all year long. I thought they were the best team, still the best team in the American League to me, although the Seattle Mariners are you know, coming up here uh, on everybody. And we'll talk about that in a second. But now you're hoping that uh, Yanir Cano can kind of pick up that slack for him, who has also been really good this year. But no, you guys know his catch is right. There's just a lot of guys who, you know, going from that eighth inning to that ninth inning, there's something different. Like a guy that I know from being here in Chicago for a long time, Matt Thornton was nails, seventh, eighth inning. But, you know, he got those opportunities in the ninth inning. It, it wasn't the same. And so can, can they withstand that loss? Sure, maybe. But you never really know until you see it for an extended period of time. But you know, there's also a team that really didn't make a ton of additions to that bullpen, a ton of additions anywhere at the deadline. And so now you're starting to see for a lot of teams some of those moves or lack of moves come back to bite you. Dude, you just compared Felix Bautista to Matt Thorne. <laughs> no, 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 no. KJ, if you listen to what if you listen to what your buddy Russ Dorsey just said, he was uh I was comparing Yanir Cano to Matt Thorne Either because one. going AJ, going from that seventh <laughs> and eighth inning, you have to hear the context. Going from the seventh and eighth inning is different than pitching the ninth. That's what I'm really talking uh, about. I understand. You, can, you should have used somebody else. You should have used – I mean, Matt Thornton's but, a, Matt Thornton was a great pitcher in the seventh inning. You put him in the ninth, it was a different animal. I, and exactly. I get what you're saying. That's all I was saying. You're That's saying, all I was saying. I think Matt Thornton never had a 1-4 ERA in a season either. So, uh, I don't know. I, I get it, Russ, but it's okay. We didn't even come out before this year. He figured something out. Matt Thornton was the same yeah. guy his whole career. Long career, too. Also, it's a difference in stuff, is it not? 100%. Oh, Thornton for sure. Was basically a one-pitch guy. I, listen, I, I was talking about going from the seventh and eighth to the ninth. It's different. It's different. Okay. I forgive you, Russ. <laughs> hey, can I show you all this tweet that'll tie in our first two topics together? Sean McDonough is on WEEI and longtime football broadcaster as well. And after Mookie Betts homered this past weekend, he said, quote, it's a trade that can never be defended and a stain that will never be erased. The trade of Mookie Betts by the Red Sox. And then uh, Jason Gay on Twitter wrote, Sean just suspended by Orioles. <laughs> <laughs> um, there it is. If you're watching on the YouTube show right now or on stadium right now, besides listening to the pod. So, Russ, to tie it into the Baltimore conversation and to get into what you were talking about a little bit deeper, do you feel like Baltimore and Michael Elias, the GM of the ball club, is going to be hamstrung because they know that they can't trade away prospects even in future years when they're contending because they are not going to re-sign those prospects and extend the ones that should be extended? If you catch my drift, they're going to have to be very careful their owner is telling them, we are now the Tampa Bay Rays. This is how we will be operating. Initially, he comes over to take the job, and they mention the Astros. They are not the Astros. They're not going to spend even close to the Astros, and the Astros have done a pretty nice job of keeping some of their core together. I think they'll keep Kyle Tucker. They signed Altuve long-term. I know they've let some guys go, like Correa and Springer, but it sounds like the Orioles aren't going to keep anyone, and that's going to hinder them, of course, in the offseason because they're not going to spend. But then during trade season, it's going to hold them back, too, in my mind. And that's why they didn't pick up another reliever. Yeah, it's it's really unfortunate. And like hearing all the comments that, you know, you guys talked about last week on the show um, and understanding that long term, it will prevent them from getting where they ultimately want to go as a, a, a organization on the field. Because if you if you're resigned to the fact already when you really just start in your window that, hey, man. We're not going to be able to, you know, keep all these guys together because you're talking about, well, this guy's going to get 200 million and this guy's going to get 150. Yes, because when you have good, young, talented players that you draft and you sign internationally and you develop into stars, those guys have to get paid. And because of that, you start to win as a ball club. 
And it's truly unfortunate that the fans of Baltimore have to hear that in a time where they should be more excited than they have been in the last 10 years, right? Like, if, if they aren't able to keep a guy like Adley Rushman, who, since he was first drafted, people are like, yeah, he's going to be the next great catcher in Major League Baseball, right? And what Jackson Holiday is already doing, you know, at Double A and Heston Kirsten and Anthony Santander, and you develop Cedric Mullins into a star in center field, and these guys in the back end are your bullpen, but it's just like, eh, you know, when we get to that year six, year seven, we're just going to have to figure something else out. It's uh, it, it's 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 such a bad way to operate. It's it's such a bad. It's a for a fan base. I, I couldn't imagine being a fan and hearing an ownership group tell you that when you're just supposed to start getting excited about what the next five to six years will be. Like you're already disappointed and mad about what's going to happen down the road, and you haven't even gotten to enjoy the ride or the journey. Russ, I can't agree with you more with the Orioles ownership group. But before we get into that, I do have to say something. John Tomasi, the guy who wrote this tweet about McDonough, he probably made it up because he's been known to make shit up before. I'm not a fan. I actually would like to maybe do some illegal, you know, things he might go to jail for to him. (laughs) (laughs) I played for the Red Sox. Off the street? Picking up alligators. That's what he meant. Who said they wanted to take somebody in the back alley? Uh, Tomasi's on that list for me. Oh, baby. um, when I was with the Red Sox, let's just say he uh, he made up some shit without talking to me, and that kind of led to my downfall with the Red Sox. Under- fine, but he also didn't talk to me about it. And then when he did, he said he wasn't apologizing, and it was you know he basically made it up, but he only said that to me. So it's a whole different story. Now let's get back to the Orioles. Tomasi can rot in hell, as far as I'm concerned. Now we'll get back to me, uh, uh, back to Angelos, right? Like if I'm an Orioles fan. I hate this. We talked about this the other day. Like, Angelos, man, dude, sign Rushman. Sign Santander. Sign Cedric Mullins. Sign Henderson. You, you know, you just lost Batista. It's a shame. This team has a legitimate shot to go to the World Series. Make yeah. the fans happy. Give them even more to come in, to Camden Yards and cheer about. Sign the lease, and let's go, Orioles fans, because the Orioles fans are great. I mean, they packed this place when there was they were awful for years. Now they got the splash zone. They got the whole thing. So let's go, Angelos. And it's like nothing's guaranteed, right? Like none of these kids that you're bringing to the big league level are guaranteed to be stars. But the ones that you found and you've developed, and you know, your Adley Rushmans and your Cedric Mons and Anthony Santander and Mount Castle and, and Gunnar Henderson, like you, you have kids who you were bad for, like, for all those years and the system rewards you for being bad. Or rewarded you, right? They kind of changed it since then. But that's how you're able to stockpile all these prospects and bring them to the big league level. And those kids are starting to have success. And there's a reason for that. But to, to, to just say, hey, we're just going to have all the success with these kids and then, you know, go after that and we'll, we'll figure it out later. There's no guarantee that later will ever come. There's no guarantee that you're going to win in this six years while you have these guys. Like baseball just doesn't work like that. We've seen it time and time again, just because, you know, yeah, you have the number one farm system in basement, uh, in baseball, and you have you have all this success. That doesn't mean that that's going to equal a World Series. And so I think you have to be really smart and strategic about where you are and understand, like, hey, we have to strike while the iron's hot because there's no guarantee that next year these guys are going to have same levels of success with the same mix or that two and three years down the road, you're going to have, you know, all these trips to the ALCS or even ALDS. You might not even make the playoffs. We've seen baseball work that way.